Hi, David Liu here, reporting for Room Now from ACR 2022. All we were talking about last year was oral surveillance and still the legacy keeps on going. I want to tell you something about something slightly related to oral surveillance and some of the data that's washed out from that. Because in oral surveillance, we did see a sub-study in that group of patients who did have some cardiovascular risk. We saw, some, uh, we saw in TNF inhibitors versus JAK inhibitors some infection data and we saw that JAK inhibitors did seem to carry an increased risk for a number of different types of infection. Now, what about East Asian patients? Because we know that they do have different infective risks and they do make up a decent proportion of our patients, but we don't always have the data to inform our decisions in that subpopulation. What we've seen at this meeting, and that's the beauty of ACR, you get data from all around the world, South Korean national insurance data looking at TNF inhibitors versus JAK inhibitors as far as zoster risk is concerned, general bacterial infection, and then opportunistic infections. And what we saw was that general bacterial infections were equal between TNF inhibitors and JAK inhibitors. We saw an outsized risk, as you might imagine, of zoster in this population with JAK inhibitors over TNF inhibitors. Even with this enriched population, we saw a 2.3 times greater risk of zoster infection in JAK inhibitor treated patients versus TNF inhibitor patients. Um, although we did see slightly more opportunistic infections with TNF inhibitor treated patients versus JAK inhibitor patients. The point I'll make though is that it's a lot more common to get zoster, serious zoster in fact, in this population compared to opportunistic infections. So plenty to consider as we go about trying to still uh, piece um, apart the real data from our surveillance in real decisions that we have to make clinic. For plenty more on rheumatoid arthritis, head on down to roomnow.com.